All right, welcome back to Primetime Kansas City. Today we have our first in-person interview with the newest Miami Marlin, Liberty High School, Missouri native, Carson Milbrandt. Carson, welcome to the podcast. Been, <laughs> been a long time coming. Now that you're drafted, finally decided you were worthy enough to come on, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and get this started. First of all, what has life been like since you got drafted by the Marlins? What have you been up to? Oh, you know, just kind of relaxing, hanging with family, friends, you know, just soaking up the last few days in KC, but pretty... Pretty, pretty exciting stuff, so it's kind of been relaxing. Uh, describe the the, the two-day process with that draft. Were you, were you nervous the entire time? Was it nice when you got picked? Were you relieved? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was pretty cool, but the first day, you know, invited some friends over, and it didn't happen, so that was kind of a bummer, but <laughs> second day, you know, happened pretty early, so it was pretty cool. Yeah, that second day, I mean, I was there. I was one of the people there, so we'll have little inside details, but that second day there, I mean, it kind of just ramped up out of nowhere. Were you kind of realizing that all this was happening really quickly, or did you kind of get lost in the moment, and then you just got ended up being a Marlin? Yeah, I mean, you know, I was lucky enough that the Miami took me, but I was just kind of hoping to get picked, and then it happened pretty fast. So, What was the pre-draft process like with all of these teams? Like, Because I know in a lot of sports, guys sometimes either have deep conversations with the teams that get picked by or completely is out of the blue. Did you have many conversations with the Marlins, or was this kind of just like – it just ended up happening. Yeah, so I met with them down at the draft combine in San Diego. That was that was in June. So, uh, but the area scout was really tight with me, and uh, you'd always talk a lot. So I wasn't really out of the blue, but it was yeah, kind of a little bit. I don't know. All right. Well, I want to know. I guess this kind of gets asked mostly with basketball and football. But did you get at, get asked any like really weird questions? Like anything just like bizarre? Uh, there was one time a scout came to my house and he showed me a video of a naked baby playing a violin. And he asked how this picture made me feel. And I was like, yeah, a little uncomfortable. And he's like, all right, man. Good. Glad you didn't like it. That was, yeah, a, that was, yeah. a, that was 100% the Royals. There's no way. That, that's, no, the only the fran- right? that's the only franchise I could see wasting their time doing that. Yeah. All right. Uh, so this will be out by the time you sign. But what was the decision process making – to go to Vandy or to stay at the to or to go to the MLB. Yeah, I mean, obviously before the draft, you know, you got your agent, your family, you sit down, you pick a number, what's comfortable for you guys, and whatever team if they reach that number, then you just gotta go and sign because that's the number you chose. Was it hard for the conversation with uh, Vanderbilt? No, uh, no, the coaches are great and they they understood, so it was yeah, they're really good people. So <laughs> they, they they lost a lot of players. <laughs> they did, yeah, yeah, Vandy. <laughs> that, I was watching it, and every other pick is like Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt. I'm like, yeah. it, not not Vanderbilt players. Vanderbilt commits. So it's just kind of like, geez, was it kind of? I I don't want to say frustrating, but was it kind of like? I, I really don't even know the word. But what was it like to see so many Vandy commits go before you? Was it kind of like a proud moment for you? Was it? And I don't mean that. I don't mean that in a disrespectful. Damn, I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. But it was just kind of like I would be like if that were me, I'd be like. Anxious to hear my name, I'd be ready to go. I mean, we, we had our official visit and we all came pretty tight, so it's pretty cool to see all those guys go. I'm not trying to start beef between you. Know, I was just, <laughs> no, I it's just a curious, you know, I, yeah. just a curious thing. All right, so the the physical combine process and all that um, was that was that a little overwhelming for you? And then do you think that it was it more uh, to help you, or was it did you feel like it was kind of useless in some ways? Uh, I mean, I just kind of, I just kind of was there. I didn't do much. I didn't do any, like the jumping or anything. But uh, it's kind of, it's pretty much vacation. Met with a few teams. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Just chilled. So it's cool. Going back to like two years, I'd say that's when you started getting attention, and to now where you are. What would you say was like the moment that got your name on the big stage where people started realizing who you were? Yeah. So last summer I went to PDP, which is the top ninety six high school players, and then. I went to area code and then U.S. trials, which is the four. They pick forty out of ninety six from PDP. But I think those three events were pretty big for me, helping my name get on the map. Yeah, I mean, it kind of it seemed like it happened fast. Like this year, like Theo Epstein was watching you pitch. It all just kind of happened really fast. What was it like pitching with this many people watching you? Because most high school games, there's there's crowds, but there's not high level. MLB World Series winning personnel watching. What was that like having those guys watch you even warm up in the bullpen? Yeah, I mean, the first time they came out, which is Ray Peck. Well, they came out the game uh, against Rockers, which was my first start. But at home, Ray Peck, I think that was one of those the most. There was like 50 some scouts there. But it was kind of nerve wracking at first, but you know, you kind of settle in and just 
kind of. At the end of the day, you got to do your thing and go out there and compete. So. I saw the video of you warming I don't know what game it was, of you warming up, and there is a good 10, 20 people just staring at you. And I was like, that has to be, like, that has to be worse than pitching and having those people watch you because you're not loose. You're getting ready. Like, that has to be the most intimidating thing. I don't know how you do that. Yeah, it's, it's a little weird because you don't want to make yourself look bad. So you kind of... Kind of not much, not much room to mess up. So yeah. Yeah. Well, to add on that, you said you got used to it. Did you ever feel like that could elevate you too? Like did that that help? I you mean, out? it just it definitely is like is bit like bottom line. You got to compete and show like your stuff because there are high MLB teams there. So mm-hmm. I would yeah, I'd say it helped a little bit. Yeah. So going from high school back to the draft you are heading out to Miami soon what is that process going to look like like what are you doing when you get down there do you go straight to ball yeah so I'm not sure what they're gonna do to me so it's like, no, do with me I guess <laughs> but, uh, I go down to so I go down to Jupiter and that's that's where the a ball is at so you know just hang on there but I come back at the end of August so yeah I do think that that's kind of something that all around the league that with every other sport, guys that get drafted, kind of you know where they end up. They play pretty quickly. Baseball, it's kind of an interesting, yeah. you know, you don't see those guys for a while. I mean, realistically, what are your goals for the rest of this year? Um, I mean, do you have any set goals for the rest of this year before you head into 2023? I mean, obviously, I'm trying to make the – trying to move up as fast as possible. So, I'm right. trying to get stronger and add some weight. Yeah, I don't want to go back to draft interviews here, but for people that aren't familiar, how would you describe yourself as a player? Like strengths, weaknesses, that type of thing? Uh, yeah, I just a lot of scouts say I'm athletic because I played basketball as well, so more athletic on the mound than a few other people, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just subtle, don't know. Subtle, <laughs> subtle play. Yeah, I don't know. Well, you, I mean, the fastball is pretty nice. I thought you'd go on to that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah that's what stands out for me at least. Yeah. Going into the draft day, was there any expectations that were you were told that you that didn't come true? Not really. I, just kinda, I thought I'd be With, maybe like a without outing a team. Yeah, but yeah. just you know. Yeah, it was not really. It's gonna so watch like, the draft. Did, did you get picked around where you thought you would get picked? Did you think eighty five was about the right spot yeah. for you? Because I know there was leading up. I was watching kind of like beginning of the second round. I was like, all right, this is probably this is a start of where he might end up going yeah and then i was i mean i was bummed to see you not go but i mean you went what the fifth pick of day two yeah was that about what you guys expected yeah i mean from any sky i talked to you know from round two to round like five so anywhere in between there pretty much i want to just wonder any of the other draftees did you uh you become friends with anyone anyone big in particular well, I'm, like Mike, I said, I have to visit uh, Drew Jones, Vandy guy. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Number, number two, two overall. Yeah. And then yep. Jackson yeah. Holiday was on my area code team. So, gotcha. I played with him a little. I played with a little bit of everyone. I was yeah. high school kids. So. To the City of Liberty, knowing that you're probably one of the bigger names to come out of Liberty High School, what does that mean to leave that kind of le- legacy for the City of Liberty and I guess the City of Kansas City? Because I'd say this is one of the bigger stories. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool because you grow up, you know, you're watching Liberty basketball, Liberty baseball, football, so to kind of just leave your legacy there. And I think all, like, our senior class and the seniors before us, but, like, we won a state ch- state championship my junior year, so we all left our own legacy, so it was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, speaking about the legacy you left at Liberty, I mean, you guys did win a state championship in this past year. You weren't able to win. You weren't able to repeat. But what about this past year, your senior year, did you feel like you improved upon the most as a player overall? My hitting. Hitting? <laughs> I hit like crap last year, and I hit like 400 this year. Like, well, well, the MLB, unfortunately, <laughs> I don't think unfortunately, you're gonna be I hitting unfortunately the MLB got rid of that, uh, unless you're going, going to be Shohei. But, yeah, I mean, they, they did not. You would have been hitting with the Marlins, but they got rid of I it. Know. That's okay. I don't know if I want to see 100 anyway. <laughs> Are you going to miss gracing the uh, the Liberty uniform? Yeah. Basketball and baseball legend? I miss basketball a lot. <laughs> Honestly. Couldn't stay away, could you? Uh, <laughs> yeah, because I, I know you said, or I know coming into your senior year, I didn't know if you were going to play or not, and then you did end up playing. Yeah. What what was what was that decision like? Because obviously there's a there's a risk there. Yeah. You know, you're going, you have hype around you for baseball to play basketball, which the odds of an injury in basketball are probably higher than baseball. Yeah. What what was the thought process there of ending up playing? Oh, I mean, I talked to a few scouts, and obviously the head coach, Roger Sturtz, was pretty heavily on me, so I uh, had a few conversations with those guys, and, you know, they kind of talked, like, you can get hurt crossing the street, just, like, walking, so yeah. 
just like if you want to do it go do it like you can't really regret it so looking back to what junior year you committed to mizzou and then decommitted looking back at it do you feel like i know you don't end up going to vandy but not being locked into one school do you think that kind of helped your draft interviews and like this whole process it helped you further not being locked into one school already your junior year yeah i mean i wouldn't say that but like Cause like either way, I just would have done the same stuff leading up, you know, gotten better and better. Well, but, I didn't know if you met like because I didn't know if schools also would like be talking to scouts saying like, "Hey, have you seen this kid?" And oh, yeah, since you're I already mean, being locked down, no one really could find you. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like Vanderbilt, you yeah, you hear Vandy command in the RCA. Yeah, I think it kind of gives you a high profile yeah. just because they're a good school. No offense, like I'm, as your friend, I'm glad you didn't go to Mizzou. <laughs> yeah, as, as three yeah, as three big Mizzou heads, it was like <laughs> good, we're like curse. we're like good for him, good for him. He, he's going to the better school. When you told me I was making your edit and you said Mizzou, I was there was bittersweet for me. <laughs> I was like, oh boy, here we go. When you decommitted, I was like, that hurts for them, but probably the right move for Car. I mean, if that and then you got to go to Van, well, didn't get to go to Vandy, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But talking about that decision, kind of baseball is a little different than basketball and football in the sense that. You could have either gone to college or you could have gone to the pros like you're going to end up doing. Yeah. What was the conversation like with teams about that? Because surely they were interested in, hey, how committed are you to Vanderbilt? And depending on where we pick you, would you go here or would you go to Vanderbilt? What was that like? Yeah, so I mean, like, so obviously Vanderbilt, like, it's not, like, you can't really go wrong with either option or a pro ball or right. going to develop and getting an education. So, like, people kind of called it a hard sign just because, like, they thought I would have gone to Vanderbilt because, like, it is a cool, good place to be. It but, is Vanderbilt, yeah. You know, we all, we all sat down with our – we picked the number, like I said, and, like, reached the number, so. Yeah, would, did you get the feeling leading up the draft day that you would get the number you were looking for? I kind of knew a little yeah. bit. Because my agent, Scott, he's, he's a good guy. And he works his butt off for me, so I kind of figured he'd be pushing for me, and he did, so. Yeah. You went down to Vanderbilt for a week. Yes. When you were there at that week, did anything like change in your mind? Like I don't know, what was your mindset going into that week on Pro Bowl or Vanderbilt, and then leaving? Did it change with how you experienced that week? I mean, not necessarily, because I I really liked my official, and I really liked the week I was down there. You know, it's awesome facilities. They have a camp at the time that was down there, so you got to hang out with like little kids, you know, and just sign some balls, stuff like that. But it was really cool down there, and I really liked it. But at the end of the day, you know, the number was reached, so can't wait. Yes. Have you had any Marlins reach out to you yet? Any pros? Anybody in the organization? No. Not, not yet, yet. Not, not yet. yet. Have the Marlins followed you? No. But the MLB does. MLB. The MLB does. That's the MLB it. That's follows even. a lot of people. Wow. <laughs> 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 well, well, nice to <laughs> Thank you, John, for... Hey. We just got to say they don't follow us. us. They, they don't follow you. Yes. I wasn't saying it like that. I'm just saying the the Marlins need to show some respect. No, I was looking at the Marlins uh, Instagram and Twitter page, waiting for them to like put the graphic up with their third, like their third through that Matt round picks, and I never saw it. And I was like, damn, I was ready to retweet that. But you're, you're just gonna you're just gonna have to prove them. You're just gonna have to show. Them. You'll get that yes. follow. Who's gonna Who's gonna have better fashion? You or Jazz? Yes. <laughs> jazz. Can't beat that. No, you gotta you gotta work for that. That's the standard there now. No, it's man. Miami. You gotta get my drip up. <laughs> yeah, how excited are you just in general to go to Miami? Because no offense to some other cities, but Miami's a pretty cool place to go, all things considered. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's nice weather. I mean you can't really complain. It's a cool place to be. Yeah, yeah. I, on the subject of you decommitting from Mizzou and we said you were glad. Throughout the whole draft I was like, I hope the Royals don't pick him. He's gonna be <laughs> I wasn't telling you this. Uh, <laughs> He's just messaging me like, please God, don't No, every time the Royals were up, I was a little nervous. Not that I didn't want to see you play, but you know, I want you to do well. The Royals, <laughs> the Royals just don't have a great track record of developing pitching. And it was like, yeah. I don't know if I trust the current guys in the organization as much as I would trust yeah. other organizations. <laughs> yeah. But was any part of you a little bit hopeful that you would get to stay close? I mean, I don't know. Like, you can't, you, know, you can't really. It is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it yeah. is. Team drafts, you're like, you're like yeah. thankful for the opportunity. Yeah, so yeah. Just can't really complain. And they hit the number, so exactly. that's what they got to do. Yeah. <laughs> do we have anything else? Because I think we all know the one question remaining. What's the one question? Oh, when we know yeah. the one question. All right. That'll take up more time. This would probably be the, yeah, this will probably take up more time because I think you either have, you will have a Have we asked answer. him this yet? No, I you haven't been have. Okay. All right. Every guest we interview. We end the interview with this. Who wins in a fight? 30 10-year-olds or one Conor McGregor? 
No Conor rules. McGregor. <sighs> we disagree. Thank you. Thank Conor you. It, Even, like, are they all attacking like the same? Yeah, yeah they, it's not like it's not like Connor and then a ten year old. Yeah, it's yeah, not. It's like, we're, not board, we're not talking though. This is an. Have average, you seen how small a ten year old is though? And this is an it's average. Small. Okay, let me let me say this. I did change it up for my buddy. What if we went to the IMG Academy and got the ten or eleven year olds? Like those are like peak athletes. No, no, no. That's not yeah, what the question is. That's not what the question is. We're talking about the thirty. You know, random. You get a fourth grade. I went to Shoal Creek and I got fourth grade. Thank you. Connor McGregor is gonna. Kill like he's gonna be okay, like, but you need to tell me if it's gotta, one octagon and you got thirty and, kids around, and you. they understand like the look. The scenario we said is that these are robots that understand things in an actual situation, but they the, know, well, yeah. they know it's they will die happening. if they lose. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Timmy's gonna, Timmy's Timmy's gonna, gonna put his life on the line. <laughs> it's only like I feel like you want to take like one punch to knock down. It. That's what I'm saying. Okay, but it's as one t- one kid takes a punch, one kid goes grabs Connor where he, no man wants to be grabbed. And then Connor could just like shove him off. Yeah, like, it's no, not. I, can... I say you're at recess, big octagon. You can get some wood chips, shove them in his eyes. Okay, and now we can I... use external forces because yeah. yeah, see that's where McGregor's smart enough to do that too. Like we're well, using... McGregor can't. Kids, oh. kids get recess. <laughs> see now you, you know you're wrong, and that's why you're adding all these extra rules because you know you're wrong. This is like the gorilla versus the what was the mountain lion the or grizzly bear? The grizzly versus if, the gorilla. If you say the gorilla. You're insane. It's the gorilla. No, dude. Have you seen how much bigger grizzly bear? See, now we're just turning into this. Yeah, I mean, this is what it ends up yeah. becoming. Is yeah. yeah. We, no. we get the grizzly heated, bear but... has it all day. What would you do, grizzly bear or gorilla? Yeah. How big is a gorilla? Just the average size gorilla. Of a gorilla. Of a gorilla. We'll, gorilla. we'll say an average gorilla versus silverback. Silver back. Okay, you we'll say an average. Av- <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like a gorilla. <laughs> yeah, gorilla. It's got hands, bro. They can punch. A grizzly bear it, they can punch. The grizzly bear has claws. Come on! It doesn't stand on its two on its two legs. That's no. where I think it's an way bigger. I don't think y'all realize how. Big I think, those but are. I don't think you understand how strong Gorilla is. Let's just let's just pull some numbers up. <laughs> some right? number we're getting stats. We didn't pull up Carson's stats one time when we were talking about baseball, yeah, but he's pulling up. Pull up he's pulling up these stats. Yeah, anyone who's listened to this podcast before will not be surprised by this at all. <laughs> it, it, it gets off the track sometimes. <laughs> Okay, a brown bear gets up to, or a grizzly bear, gets up to 1,300 pounds, all right? A gorilla's strong. You know how much a gorilla weighs? How much? 300 pounds. No. You want to tell me that 300 pounds? That is so wrong. That's fake stuff. If I go to the zoo and get the silverback gorilla. 1,300, adult. It says 180. Yeah, that's when it's little. That's when it's a baby. All right? So then we go to the gorilla, 300. Oh, but he didn't say enough to 500. Yeah, okay, up to, part, 500. All right, all right, up to 500. All right, up to 500. But it can stand on two feet. That's such an advantage. Is it? I think he just punches it in the face. And like, yeah. Punch it, yeah. Bro, what if it gets caught in the eye? What's, punch what's, back look, up what, what, look up which animal's smarter. That that I would like to I know. Mean, okay, now that, we're just getting I mean, too, That's yeah, not really no, possible. I feel like you could look it up. And like, a gorilla might have a higher IQ than the average. Yeah, that's, there's probably a YouTube video or like a dark there's web video. Definitely, there's a dark web video of this fight. Guys. Dark web? Okay. We don't need to go there. Well, I'm not saying this we'll is not going to be on YouTube. We'll have to watch some in-depth analysis and then see how we all feel afterwards. But I'm, I feel like y'all are underestimating the strength of a grizzly bear. I think you're talking about a... And, and... They got like thick, <laughs> thick, thick skin and okay. that big layer. If you shoot thick. a gorilla, all right, it's dead, all right. But if you shoot a grizzly How did we bear, get to this? it's Why? gonna keep going. Come on. Oh, you know the other thing we need, we need to do with Carson what we did with Nick Heath, where if he signed, oh yeah, what was the we contract? We also have a, we have to have you sign a contract for us too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. If, if you be, if you get the Mike Trout Mike Trout deal, you owe bigger. us. Yeah, yeah. Or, if you get the Mike Trout deal or bigger, you owe the podcast a million dollars. Um, not us three individually. Just I'm not total. signing that. If you do, if though, you get ten years, four hundred fifty million. You owe us a million, you owe us a million dollars. Yeah, that's, better than other. Podcasts. I think that's fair. I think that we Nick, say that Nick with everybody. Uh, Royals minor league outfielder. No offense, Nick, but I think we have slightly better odds here. Yeah. Hey, you know what? If, uh, we, if we get enough, hit on Nick, Nick, well, no, Nick was, if we Nick get was enough a... prospects and players on this podcast, it's gonna hit eventually. This is like playing the lottery. I should have said that you don't have a contract. You I mean, five hundred thousand. You're pretty much all I need to. I mean, you're, I mean, you're I rookie. Didn't sign my contract. Yet. <laughs> Your rookie deal is probably gonna be around the Mike Trout deal, I would assume, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. No. Okay. Well. I think that's it. We appreciate you coming on. I know yeah. John just got off the rails talking about the yeah. and shooting them. Hey, y'all ganged up on me went three on one with the gorillas. I had to defend myself, all right? I don't know what to tell you. Like, you can't just sneak that one by me. 
So. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. That's enough. Yeah, thank you, Carson, for Thanks. coming on. Yeah. First in-person interview. That was probably the last one. It was an experiment. <laughs> no, it won't be the last one. It won't be the last one. We'll we'll, we'll figure it out later down yeah, the line. Until this yeah, doesn't this, work. This this set up. <laughs> if you're actually watching this interview, it's a miracle. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> okay, John. Enough. Enough. John's been just hating on everyone. Yeah, John's been a hater today. He's just I'm been a on hater. Every You're like, well, the MLB follows everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you've been, you've been hey, a hater all so day. So is the guy that asked him the question that I said as a joke yesterday. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. You literally asked him. We'll all right, we're done. We're done. Thank you for listening. We'll catch you on next episode. All right. Well, John.